Hey folks, my education began really when I finished school and that reflection in those days led to a lot of unlearning, a lot of relearning. In that time I realized that I was presented facts disguised as knowledge, opinions disguised as fact, and a whole lot of memorized processes disguised as problem solving. Now it's all good now though because I know that I don't know. So I value divergent thinking that seeing many answers to the same question. I value creativity that's the capacity for original thought. I value reading, writing, counting, thinking. These are all the keys to converting facts into information, into knowledge, into wisdom, and solutions to the problems of our existing state. I've also learned to value biographies, stories from someone's life and their wisdom earned through lessons learned, they inspire and ground me. How can I stay focused on my setbacks after I've learned about so many comebacks? How can I sweat myself after I see how my path was paved by their blood, sweat, tears, courage, ideas, and principles? How can I stay stuck in convention when I know the trailblazers who innovated all of our norms. Check it. The first PhD was awarded at Harvard University back in 1889. Now this means that the cats who awarded that PhD simply walked with the self-appointed mantle of authority and knowledge without having been granted the title. Now this level of authority is established by a healthy dose of humility, the kind that only comes through trials, tribulations, and then victory, conquering first conceit and then defeat. Now it's further established by creativity, divergent thinking, innovation, work ethic, patience, grace, forgiveness, preparation, failure, persistence, equality, or the idea of such, opportunity, and circumstance. Remember that Dr. Benjamin E. Mays was Martin Luther King's mentor. Now, I bet they learned a lot from each other. Say that. Now learning their story told me to stop sweating myself about all my mentees. New MO. Help these folks grow, then let them go. And along the way, let them help you grow. Prepare them and then accept them as your colleagues. Because if you mentor right, they will probably exceed you. How about this one? Grambling State University's Doug Williams had a six hour root canal under full anesthesia the night before the 1987 Super Bowl. And then he watched his Washington Redskins fall behind John Elway's Denver Broncos 10 to nothing in the first quarter before the Redskins scored 35 points in the second quarter and were going to win the game 42 to 10, making Doug Williams the first black quarterback to lead his team to a Super Bowl victory. And then the brother lost his starting job 
the very next season. Life is a series of peaks and valleys, people. And the struggle is real. I got one more for you. Teacher Jane Elliott conducted an experiment on April the 5th, 1968, with her third grade class in Riceville, Iowa, in the great Midwest. And she called it the Brown Eyes, Blue Eyes Experiment. And the purpose of the exercise was to let her students feel what it was like to be treated as a person of color in the United States. Now, if you're familiar with dates, she conducted this experiment the day after Martin Luther King was assassinated in Memphis. Now, that took empathy, foresight, insight, preparation, and a lot of guts. Now, if you're keeping score about these three stories, and I know some of you are. I've talked about two black men, one white woman, two educators, one baller. Now they each have story arcs that intersect around important ideas of teaching, learning, mentoring, mediation, and equality. And they're all connected to the important work of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. They're all valuable parts of my history. Because we ain't got much, y'all. But we got exactly what we need. We have principles, ideas, creativity, and work ethic. Now, we are living in some very strange times. I don't have to tell you that. But we've come too far to turn back now. But we have to pay attention to yesterday's lessons that we oversimplify, take for granted, or think of as old and lame. Now my role in these times is to challenge a special nation, a nation of talkers, squawkers, stalkers, and sleepwalkers to quiet themselves, to remember, to think, and to grow. I love y'all, and thank you for listening.